It's Christmas. And people across the country are getting ready to celebrate. Ah! Oh, this recipe's hard enough for them to do all this. But if you can't cook... <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified. Christmas dinner can be a disaster. Oh, sh... I hope they know how bad we are at cooking. Hello! So, thankfully, Dame Mary Berry is coming to the rescue. They've asked for help. I'm going to give it. I don't think you've chopped that too well. <laughs> Teaching a family of hapless cooks... Never got a chocolate before my life. Oh, for goodness sake. ..how to make the most important meal of the year. I do want your aunt and your mum to feel that you've really made an enormous effort. With help from celebrity friends... It's the perfect day for a festive feast. Hard work... Definitely feel the pressure. Inside, I'm bricking it. I am so nervous. And a sprinkle of Christmas magic. This is stunning. I feel like royalty. Can they surprise their loved ones with a festive feast to remember? This is Mary's crash course in Christmas. This Christmas, Mary Berry is pulling out all the stops, sharing her passion for cooking and teaching to make one family's festivities extra special. Freddy! There's a good boy. And she's enlisted some help. Hello, Patrick. Hi, Gosh, it's Mary. cold out there. Come in. Great British sewing bees, Patrick Grant. Oh, it's just lovely to see Hi, you again. Hi, Mary. And presenter, Alex Jones. I'm really chuffed to have you both. We are delighted to be your helpers, aren't we? Delighted to cheers be having to a that. Merry proper cheers. Christmas. We've got the champagne already. Uh, we have. We need to keep a straight head. <laughs> the plan is to help a family that have had a really, really tough time. They deserve a treat, so I'm going to teach them to cook a really special festive feast. They're absolute novices. They've asked for help. I'm going to give it, and let's hope the results are brilliant. So you are going to teach in the kitchen. You know, like people have personal trainers. I, yeah. I'm their <laughs> personal This is Mary's cook. crash course exactly. in Christmas. Can you tell us about the family? I've got a recording here, if I can work it. There they are. Cousins James, Jack and Leah from Hearn Bay in Kent are as close as it gets when it comes to a tight-knit family. You two, behave yourselves. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Be nice. Leah is sister to younger brother James. I work within the police and I also am a beach lifeguard. I love helping people and that's why I do the jobs I do. Jack is their cousin and partner in crime. I would describe myself as a happy-go-lucky character, really. I always call them the terrible twosome because they're always getting in trouble, always being cheeky, and I'm always trying to keep them in check. <laughs> I love Leah. One thing they all have in common is their lack of skill when it comes to the kitchen. This is a bit embarrassing. This is when I melted the scales on my cooker top. <laughs> <laughs> An overcooked set of kitchen scales. Delicious. Jack is going to be the worst cook, I can tell you that for certain. Once put pizza in the oven and uh, left the plastic on, so I've completely ruined the oven. <laughs> that looks dreadful. I had to get it professionally clean before my parents got back off holiday. Um, Still eat it? Did I eat the pizza? Yeah. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't actually. I actually ordered one in the end, I think. <laughs> I think you've really got your work cut out for you there, Mary. This year, the cousins want to do something special for their mums. My uh, auntie Kaz and my mum are sisters, and they're super close. They're always, always thinking of others. It's down to our mum's reason why we've all become so close as we've grown up. My mum has multiple sclerosis. She got that when I was 10 years old. She trained to be a nurse for the NHS for three years, and then she started deteriorating quite badly. And not long after that, she was in a wheelchair, so she had to basically stop. It's been heartbreaking for my mum, seeing her baby sister uh, rapidly decline and struggle to do the things that she used to be able to do. Like so many of us, the pandemic forced this close-knit family to become distant. But frontline jobs and illness meant they haven't all been together again for two years. It's been a really difficult couple of years for our mums. My mum's only been able to see carers, which has been very tough on her. I work with a lot of the public all the time, which makes me high risk. I wanted to shield myself from the vulnerable people in my family. I was quite ill um, last year and I had to go into hospital. And because I was then classed as being vulnerable, I couldn't see my mum. 
My sister is my mum's only daughter and they are very close to one another. And when they haven't had the opportunity to see each other, it's very difficult. With Kaz and then Leah considered high risk, the family were unable to be in the same room. For their mums, it's been hard not having the family around, especially at their favourite time of the year. Last year was the first time I didn't spend Christmas with my mum, um, which was very, very tough of her. And uh, yeah, it was pretty miserable, to be quite honest. Spending Christmas apart from everyone, it was completely difficult and it was weird. It's something that we're not used to as a close family. My mum is a really good cook. She always would make the gammon, stuffing, Christmas pudding. She'd go all out and make everything from scratch. That's probably why we're all still such bad cooks now, because we've never had a chance to actually give it a go. <laughs> so this year, the cousins want to surprise their mums with a Christmas feast they'll never forget. This is the first time we're going to be all together in two years, so it's going to be really exciting. I want to do this feast for my auntie Kaz and my mum because I think they're incredible. They're the most selfless people you'll ever meet. They'll do anything for anybody. They really deserve this. Two inspirational women. It's our chance to give something back. My mum is so resilient. The things she does just amazes me from day to day. She really, really deserves this. It's got to be one to remember. I'm looking forward to it. It's lovely that they want to do this for their mums. I think it's very sweet indeed. They're going to keep it as a surprise, but something that they'll all go ooh and ah, and those mums are going to be so proud. And also, it's a reflection on loads of other families, isn't it, who haven't been together. The most important thing is to have the family around at Christmas time. Yes. I just love having my chicks all around me, and uh, I'm totally content. Do you guys play any games at Christmas? I have little stickers, and I give them for everybody with names on, anything from Queen Victoria. It's great fun, and the children also absolutely love it. Well, we do the label game, and the more sherry we drink, well, the more competitive yeah. it gets. <laughs> <laughs> the last Christmas we were all together, I was David Beckham. Because well, <laughs> amazing. I mean, I've always thought you had a look of David B about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just fun and games. Mary has an important job for her helpers. Now, I've chosen three smashing recipes. I want to teach them one to one. I'll do my bit on the cooking. I want you to be in charge of the extras. Now, chocolate is very important at Christmas time. I would like you to go and find the very, very best chocolate. Also, I think they should have really good booze. Go together, have a taste, don't let me down. And I want you to come back sober. OK. I think that's a challenge we can accept. We'll try. And well, there, there you are, are. you There's see, a cue that's a cheers. For a toast. There you go. It's, it's up to Christmas. me to now get teaching. With their mum's surprise feast fast approaching, Jack, James and Leah are on their way to Mary's house for a crash course in Christmas catering. Can't wait. So yeah, it's all feeling a bit real now, isn't it? Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're going to meet Mary Berry. I'm going to be scared now, to be quite honest. Before they arrive, Mary has some news to share with the kitchen novices. Hello, James, Jack and Leah. <laughs> I hope you're ready for some Christmas cooking. And we're going to make a very memorable Christmas feast. I think we're going to be cooking something well out of my league, I think. One of you is going to be making a first course. Smoked salmon patty with a wonderful layer of watercress running through the middle. Ooh. How do you cook salmon? How do you know it's done? It sounds too technical for me, <laughs> mate. And for the main course, it's glazed ham with clementines, all shiny on top, and some sautéed garlic potatoes. And there's a double mustard sauce to go with it. Oh, that's a bit of me, that is. And for dessert, we have a dish worthy of any Christmas feast. I know your mums used to make tiramisu. So we're going to make my tiramisu red fruit trifle. That will go down yeah. well. Yeah. That was always on the, on the table at Christmas, wasn't it, yeah. growing up? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so I've got two very special helpers. Hello! Hello! How are you? Oh, we've heard all about you. See you very See you soon. soon. Ooh, oh, I can't wait, Mary. Done. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I hope they know how bad we are at cooking. So, hope, but we definitely so. will need their help. Because you actually think we're going to pull this off? I think we can do it. Yeah. You think? I've got faith. I'll give it my best shot. It's going to yeah. be a merry, berry Christmas, that's for sure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> As the self-confessed hapless cooks make their way to Mary's for a much-needed masterclass, she's got time to start prepping the main. 
I've got a beautiful piece of gammon here. Um, this is unsmoked, it could be smoked. And I have a nifty trick that makes it much easier to lift it out of the pan. Fold a long piece of foil into three and wrap it under the joint. Hold it up and into the pan. Now, it's very important that it fits snugly because I'm going to cook it in orange juice, which gives a lovely flavour. Pour it in. If it doesn't fit snugly, you'll have to use too much orange juice. Add three bay leaves and a couple of cinnamon sticks. Then bring to the boil on the hob, allow to simmer for five minutes, before popping into a 130 fan oven to cook low and slow for two and a half hours. I'm ready for my novices to arrive. Here we go, boys. The cousins have a lot to learn, and the feast is just days away. Can Mary work her Christmas magic? Hello! Hello! So it's James, Jack and Leah. Hello. That's us. <laughs> it's cold out there. It's, it's freezing. Cold. And we'll go straight to the kitchen. Sounds good to me. So, last Christmas, for all of us, was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right, yeah. It wasn't much for Christmas at all, to be honest, so I'm going to make an extra special one this year. Well, I've chosen the menu, and you've got to choose who's doing what. Oh, well, can I do the dessert, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to do the ham? Oh, I would definitely take the ham, if that's all right with you guys. He's a meat man, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am. You well, it looks like left. I'll do the starter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are you good on starters? No. no. I've never made a starter in my life. I've got my work cut out teaching him this one. My salmon and watercress pâté looks simply fabulous on a festive table. But getting those layers right might require some practice at home. This is special and it's going to wow everybody. Here's the recipe Thank and uh, read you. it well. And behind <laughs> you are some notebooks. If you Get think right there's in. anything that he will forget, uh, just jot a few notes I down. Okay, we'll do. I've got a loaf tin here and this is a one pound loaf tin and I'm going to line it with non-stick paper. It would slip about if I didn't butter the tin. Yeah, making notes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be turned out, and in order to have a pretty top to it, uh, I'm going to put a little sprig of dill. Just... Four small sprigs of fresh dill. Oh, gosh, must keep, <laughs> keep to Mary Berry's recipe. <laughs> 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 Using long strips of smoked salmon, we're lining the tin, making sure to overlap each piece so there are no gaps. Looking good, Jack. Cheers, mate. You're quite a delicate touch with that. It looks very good. Yeah. Then I'm going to put a little bit at the end. Making sure the whole thing is covered. Exactly. I'd like you to do the middle layer because it's going to be watercress. If you could just roughly chop that. I've got a little bunch of dill here. If you take off the stalks and chop it. So do you think the mums will like this? Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. going to absolutely love it. This is, uh, this is right up their street, yeah. I don't think they can imagine that we're going to produce anything no. that you're going to teach us. It's going to be one massive surprise. Now for the salmon pate filling. Into a processor, add the remaining smoked salmon. I've got 180 of full-fat green cheese. I'm going to put two teaspoons of hot horseradish. A tablespoon of lemon juice. You're going to be all on your own, so make sure you know what you're doing. Yep, I am taking notes, yeah. Well, these guys are. Yeah. <laughs> 100 grams of soft butter and 150 grams of cooked fresh salmon, which I simply baked in foil for 15 minutes in a 160 fan oven. Season and then whisk together until it's smooth. And tell me when you think it's all one colour. About that, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Good judgment. <laughs> Perfect. Now for Jack's watercress and dill. I don't think you've chopped that too well. Look, can you see? Look at this big pieces. <laughs> oh, look. Come on, a bit more let chopping. Me do it, let me do it. Chop, chop. Beautiful. Mixed with three tablespoons of the pate, and it's ready to go. Jack, your mum's been pretty poorly for quite some time. Has it been difficult for her? Yeah, it's been very difficult for her. Um, like we are quite a close-knit family and, and, you know, she gives a lot to other people. She never asks for anything back. Um, she was diagnosed with MS um, a while back now and it, uh, she lost quite a lot of independence. So cooking was quite a bit of a passion for her. So not being able to do that as much anymore is, um, 
yeah, it's quite upsetting, but hopefully I can make a fantastic meal for her. She's going to love. Big Christmas around my house for most years, I think, if I can pull this off. So, yeah. <laughs> well, now comes the real test of his skill, assembling the pate. It's patience when you're doing this. First, it's in with half of the salmon pate. Can you see I was being very careful? Yeah. I did not get it all the way down the side. Mm -hmm. You all right, Jack? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. get in there. Now for that wonderful bright green mix. That's to be nice and neat as well, Mary. I've, it's got to be nice and neat. Yeah. Would you say he's a sort of neat person? No. No. You speak very highly of me, don't they? <laughs> you put in the last one. OK, then. For the final layer, top with the remaining pâté and smooth out evenly. He's, he's done all right, hasn't he? Is it looking neat over there, Jack? Um, give it a good go. I'm quite happy with that. You're happy with it. Yeah. Well, how am I happy with it? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just do a little bit of it. You see, carefully folding it over. Then, if you take the paper mm -hmm. over like that, and press down, mm -hmm. because we don't want any air gaps in. Press it down. That's wow. absolutely perfect. Jack, I think you should be jolly proud of that. Don't you think it's well done? It needs to be chilled now for a few hours, so yes. put that in the fridge. Jack's masterpiece needs at least five hours in the fridge to firm up, and then it's ready to serve. Give it a bang, turn it out like that, then the paper should help. Wow. wow, that was good. That's amazing. See how gentle I'm being? At the bottom, a sawing action. Double the amount of salmon, because <laughs> it's the end piece. Mary, can I have the end one, please? <laughs> He's a bit of a gannet, isn't he? Yeah. Jack, it's all yours. Remember the sawing action. Yeah. It looks so pretty, Mary. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> oh! I'll have this one, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. Did. I've Is never it? had salmon before. But well, you've never had salmon before. No, I never. You're a brave girl to try so it's, it for the it's first actually time. lovely. Thank you. Mm. Tip top. Tip top. <laughs> when this is all laid up and your mums walk in, what do you think they'll say? I think they'll be shocked. I think that's, yeah. I think that's come out of yeah. the packet, probably, wouldn't they? Yeah. It's brilliant. Oh, they never believe I'd make that, ever. No. No. And so. I hope you'll be very proud. And I also, it will. will set you on to enjoying cooking. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So, what do you think of that? I now? think it's amazing. Hard act to follow. <laughs> While Jack basks in the glory of completing his starter, Mary's celebrity helpers are on a mission to find the perfect chocolates for this family's surprise festive feast. We've come to the right place. Get it wrong, and it's not only Dame Mary Berry they'll be disappointing, but also two very special mums. No pressure, guys. Would you like to try some? Absolutely. Probably would, wouldn't we? Is it an all-in situation? Yeah, go for it. Looks like it shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Very nice. It's warm and mm. We've got to think now. What would Mary like? Can you channel Mary. I'll be thinking booze. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. let, let's go crunch. Shall okay. We? I don't think I've tasted anything like that before. Mm. Oh, that's really spicy. Oh, it's crunchy. I wasn't mm. expecting that. Oh, yeah. they look delicious. Can self-confessed cooking catastrophe Alex be trusted to give these truffles their festive flourish? Oh, and just let that's it so dribble. Nerdy. Like a pudding. Right. Okay. Don't watch, Patrick. <laughs> You're making me nervous. Back off. Right, here we go. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. That's perfect one. Watch this now. Have you ever seen a better Christmas truffle? I genuinely don't think I have. That's one thing ticked off the list. Best day ever! Back at Mary's, there's a small matter of the main course. James, I'm going to put you through your paces. Oh, dear. And James is taking the reins and he needs to pay attention to pull off this magnificent centrepiece. A scrumptious clementine glazed ham served with crispy garlic and rosemary potatoes and a double mustard sauce. You just watch what I'm doing now and you're going to help me. OK. You're not nervous at all, no, I'm not nervous. You? I'm excited. I'm buzzing for it. <laughs> the gammon joint has had its two and a half hours in the oven and has been left to cool slightly. God, it's... Come on, can you lift that? <laughs> You just you see how heavy that is. Cool. It is heavy. It smells nice. OK, on the board. It's certainly handy having some extra muscle in the kitchen. 
It's lovely and tender. There it is. Before this beautiful ham gets its glaze, the skin first needs to be removed and the fat scored. I'll hold it steady for you. OK, doc. And this is my arm. I wish to keep it. <laughs> so just do... Uh, not, not too far down, just, just into the bottom of the fat. OK, doc. What do you cook, then, at home? I mean, I am good at beans and toast. <laughs> really good. If you want me to cook your beans and toast one day, Mary. I can't <laughs> really believe it. He looks pretty fit on it, anyway. <laughs> I think does he go home to Mum? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> With the fat scored... If you can move that to the back for the moment... ..we can get on with making the sticky, sweet glaze that makes this ham so sumptuous. Add four tablespoons of thin-cut marmalade into a pan. I love marmalade. <laughs> Add four tablespoons of water and a clementine sliced into discs. You've really got to show your skills. Now, that knife is very sharp. Do you think he'll manage it? I want four slices and that we don't use the ends. Okay. And you go across the grain. Yeah. I want discs. Okay. You see? see? Okay, go on. <laughs> it's your time to shine, mate. Right, while you're doing that, I'm just going to whisk this up. Oh, for goodness sake. I said yeah, across good. the grain. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> I meant across in slices, so I had discs. <laughs> Pop those to one side. Right, let's do another one. Oops. Another orange. <laughs> How many oranges have we got? <laughs> nice and neat, even. It's jolly good that this is a practice run. Oh, that's very, oh, very good. Perfect. Yes. Now, it's all dissolved. OK. So I'm going to gently put this into poach. So, James, are you likely to be on duty on Christmas Day? I was last year. My Christmas consisted of working on the motorway and eating a burger out of the burger van for my Christmas dinner, so... Different, yeah. So this time, with a special party, we'll be better. Absolutely. Yeah, it'd be yeah. amazing. Now, this is very... You can see it's bubbling away here. Once poached and glistening, it's time to lift out the clementine slices. Now, look at that lovely shine. I bet Jameses don't look like that. <laughs> Actually, he sliced them rather well. Yeah. <laughs> a touch more heat and the glaze is done. You can see now it's syrupy. Look, watch as it drops. Whilst James and I finish the ham, that is ready to have its glaze put on. I've got a brush to do it with. Jack can make a start preparing the potatoes. We're not going to do traditional roast potatoes. We're going to do something a little bit smarter, taking little baby potatoes and cutting them into four slices and roasting them with garlic and rosemary. Mm, lovely. It's delicious. <laughs> Will you super burn Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. keep an eye on them. So I always have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Am I yeah. to do all of these potatoes? You're going to do all the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. It smells it's good, good too. What makes this ham a real showstopper is adorning the top with clementine slices. I just hope Jane's is up to the task. They are slipping off. Can you put some cocktail sticks just to make them stay still? Well done. That's it. I do want your aunt and your mum to feel that you've really made an enormous effort and this is going to look really beautiful. It'll be shiny. A sprinkle of demerara sugar for extra crunch. The lean part of the meat, I don't want it overcooked, so I'm going to put a bit of uh, foil around it. This will all get gloriously brown, and we won't overcook the meat. Right, really. OK. The potatoes just need a drizzle of oil. Not over me, please. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's it, mind your fingers. And a bulb of garlic cut in half. That's perfect. Yeah. These will all get beautifully soft, and at the end, you can squeeze that. Do you like garlic? I love garlic. Yeah, I love garlic. garlic. Then the ham and potatoes cook together for 30 minutes in a 200 fan oven. We want a nice sauce to go with that, and so we thought a mustard sauce. I've got grainy mustard here, and I've got Dijon mustard. We're simply mixing together 400 grams of creme fraiche. That's it. Two teaspoons of whole grain mustard. That's a bit generous one, a little bit less. Yeah. And the same of Dijon. Salt and pepper, two teaspoons of caster sugar, a little clementine zest, and a tablespoon of lemon juice. And I want you to stir that. Yep. A good stir. You're a dab hand at this, aren't you? Mmm. <laughs> Very zesty. I like that a lot. Sprinkle the potatoes with some chopped rosemary for the last few minutes of their cook. Then we're ready to serve. I'm getting hungry. I am. 
It looks good from here. Come on, strong man. <laughs> oh, wow. That does look good. Lovely. So let's get carving. Right. Wow. Gosh, that looks good. It's beautifully tender. <laughs> so good. You want to taste, don't oh, you? And all you want to do wait. is say, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. I'm going to need to learn sometime, so... <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Thank Lovely. You. Thank you. Let's see how it tastes. Mm, that was amazing. That is phenomenal. Thank you. With chocolates under their belts and belts loosened, Alex and Patrick need to ensure the family's feast has plenty of festive tipple. Hi, yeah. But with so much on offer, it's hard to know what Mary would want. Only one way to find out. Honestly, that is delicious. Yeah, yeah. That is coming with us. Oh, well, cheer. Chin, chin. Oh, oh it's fiery, isn't it? <laughs> shot after shot of that. That's delicious. I mean, that smells like Christmas. Christmas in my house, we used to get a stocking in the morning, and it was always a couple of tangerines. Well, Mum still dries oranges, you know, slices in the oven okay. to go on oh, yeah, the yeah. roof or whatever. Oh, she? And the house smells Fresh, like nice. this. Lovely. Nice, lovely. Right, grab a basket. Come on, let's fill it. Right, here we go. This is the ginger wine. Ready? Okay, so right. One of those. Oh, no, we'll have a couple of those, All shall right. we? Oh, yeah, this is the one we want. Irish cream. Okay. This is the blood um, orange. There you go. All right, hang on. Raspberry liquor. Yes, please. Okay. okay. Have okay. you got a credit we'll card? Go Back at Mary's house, and with the one-to-one -one cooking lessons nearly over, the pressure's on Leah to make sure she masters the very special Christmas dessert. Tiramisu is a very famous Italian pudding. We are doing my version, and it's a trifle, because you can't have Christmas without a trifle. Two layers of mascarpone mixture, two layers of sponge and coffee and brandy, and a lovely fruity layer. Then we're going to decorate it on the top. And you're going to do a bit of piping. Have you ever done any piping? No. <laughs> no. The first step is to make a lovely red fruit compote. OK. We're using 500 grams of frozen mixed berries. Those go into a pan with 50 grams of caster sugar and onto a gentle heat until soft and defrosted. The main thing on this is to keep the fruit whole. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, the sponges, would you like to cut them in half I was certainly <laughs> not giving them to James, because he would have them in little strips. I them. would. And just do six to start with, because that will be the first layer. Can you boys do a bit of grating of chocolate? We can do. Certainly can. It's dark chocolate. You're doing okay. very well with Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> so you're quite close to your mum. Yeah, we're really close. During the pandemic, you were separate, of course. Yeah, yeah, so I was um, classed as... Uh, quite vulnerable and um, so I couldn't see anybody and um, that was really difficult you know when you're used to spending time with people you know and um, seeing them regularly not even you know to try just to pop around for a cup of tea that was really difficult yeah and how long were you apart God, God, months it was months wasn't it so yeah a long time yeah something we're not used to this is a very special party so it's really going to cheer them up we're doing a good effort there it takes two to grate chocolate. Oh, I've never grated chocolate before in my life. <laughs> I usually just eat it. Right, the fruit's just right, bubbling a little bit. So I want the juice separated from the actual fruit. We let the fruit go into the sieve. Oh, it smells good. Mm. I'm mixing together a heap tablespoon of corn flour with two tablespoons of cold water and adding it to the glorious ruby red liquid then back onto the heat to thicken up. Very important to keep stirring until it's smooth. Right, so don't leave it. Don't leave it, don't, don't go and answer the door. <laughs> now, it's really thick now, can you see that? Yeah. In goes the fruit and any juice left. Stir to coat, then leave that to cool. This is a very indulgent dessert and to make it so rich, we are doing a mascarpone layer. Mix together mascarpone cheese. 250 grams. 600 mils of double pouring cream. A little to start with in there. Six tablespoons of icing sugar. 
and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Okay. Press that up. And then whisk until lovely and thick, adding the remaining cream as you go. You're doing very well. It can go faster. OK, go for it. Go for it, that's it. <laughs> that's just perfect. Now we're going to come to the sponges here. The final layer is the trifle sponge, which will be soaked in 450 ml of strong coffee and 40 ml of brandy. Keep the bottle away from the boys. Yeah. It is Christmas after all. Can you put half of that in there? Because otherwise we could be left with nothing to soak the rest of the sponges with. There. You've got this easy. <laughs> yeah, you've got your work cut out for here. Dip them in like that. Gone quite soggy. That's, we want them soggy. And you can sort of see from the side whether it goes through. Now we're going to assemble the layers. Are you ready? Ready. <laughs> if you push at the end there, if you push that in like that, that's it. What do you think? Looking good. Yeah. Press the trifle sponges down so they're a beautifully even flat layer. You put your third of the cream in the middle to start with. You want to be able to see that layer of cream all round the edge. Are you glad you didn't get this I'm job? I'm very happy I've got the ham. <laughs> now we need some of the boys' chocolate. Oh, it smells lovely. That's it. Now sprinkle half the chocolate. OK. We'll keep some for the top. Mary, do you want to feel some sneaky bit of chocolate? <laughs> oh, you can have a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> Go on in, <laughs> Now for that luscious, cooled berry compote. Try not to mix the layers together because you lose the lovely contrast. Yeah. OK. So when uh, the two mums come in, it's got to look beautiful. That's perfect. Sample. We're just repeating the process with another boozy trifle sponge layer. There you are, aren't we? Just a little corner there as well. I'm not... yeah. <laughs> they're, they're absolutely <laughs> nipping. <laughs> <laughs> And now, the final layer. You can use whatever weapons you like. Whatever I can get my hands on. There we are. On with the chocolate. Well done. To give this trifle the wow factor, Leah will have to pull out the stops and learn how to pipe. Oh, no. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> you be careful, cos I might get... <laughs> can we get him to do it? I, I will we'll just see how you get on. <laughs> the remaining cream mixture goes into the bag and we're ready to go. Keep it upright, yeah, like that, and then down. And down. Look at Leah. that. Oh, <laughs> well go done. I've done this before, isn't she really proud? <laughs> on. Perfect. Maybe they're a little small and flat, but never mind. It's your first effort. We let the yeah. boys have them. Now, do you think you'll get the hang of it? Yeah, I think I've got this. You've got the idea. <laughs> 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 OK, come on. Come on, mate. OK. Well, <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Thank heavens it's Leah in charge of the pudding. Thank you. I'm really pleased with it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, though, without you there. <laughs> You've got us, Leah. It'd be yeah. fun. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> What's the verdict, then? Come on. Mmm. That's amazing. That's really, really good. I can't believe I've been cooking with Mary Berry. It's been the most surreal experience of my life and I've loved every second of it. Sponge, so good. I must say, today's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's something I'll be never forgetting. You boys seem to be wolfing it down. <laughs> when Mary Berry tells you off, you feel very disappointed in yourself <laughs> and you make a conscious effort not to do it again. <laughs> Mary makes it look easy. She does. Yeah, she yeah. does. Yeah. It's so easy. We've got to work out cut for us. Pressure's on. The pressure is yeah. on. Sweat and tears comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Good luck, Jack. And don't forget the sprig of dill at the bottom, so when you turn it out, it looks most impressive. James, I don't want to see any clementine wedges. I want neat little slices. Leah, good luck with that tiramisu trifle. Follow the directions to get the layers right. We've got each other. Yeah, yeah, we've got each other. We'll be all right. <laughs> Just want to chuck a bit of butter on the foil, salmon on, chuck in the oven for 15 minutes. How hard can it be? Is that a knob of butter? James and Leah are practising together in Leah's kitchen. Right, gammon time. Oh, getting Christmassy. <laughs> Almost gone absolutely everywhere. But James is already taking shortcuts. I don't understand why you're just not cutting the corner off. Leah has made a start on her dessert. That's not looking good. Why has it gone so hard? This is very stressful. On a scale of one to ten, how do you think it's going so far? Two. <laughs> it's not going yeah. well. Oh, I've got to put salt and pepper on it. And a bit of dill on top. Right. So, a little bit of dill, just like a chef. A chef that forgot to do it the first time. OK. OK, step one done. I'm quite happy with that. My mum would not believe what I'm doing at the moment. So uh, Mary said no gaps, and I've got lots of gaps. <laughs> it's looking a bit like that meat dress that Lady Gaga wore. Yeah, apart from that, it's going great. It seems the cousins are all experiencing a few wobbles when it comes to following their recipes. Do you know what I think's happened? I've put more caster sugar, and I think it should be icing sugar. <gasps> I think it might ruin it. To help, Leah's got a guide so she knows what she's aiming for. Oh, no. The sponge is coming off the bottom and into the cream, which you said don't do. Does this make you worried when we're going to do it for real? Yeah, I'm absolutely terrified. So this, oh, this recipe's hard enough for them to do with this. We will not operate unless lid is fully locked. OK, well, that's a good start. I think it goes that way. Ah! Come on! <laughs> nice and pink, just like Mary said. Maybe I'm doing a little bit better than I thought. Oh, James, that isn't... Why is <laughs> James? not cutting very well at all. <laughs> the magic moment. Here we go. Let's see how this turns out. What do you reckon? That's what I look like in a bikini at the end of an all-inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> the glaze is looking runny. It looks more like a... like an ale. Oh, God. Her glaze definitely didn't look anything like that. Oh, mate, this is a lot more difficult than I actually thought it was going to be. I uh, forgot the horseradish. I love horseradish, and I'm actually gutted I forgot to put it in. If I cook like this in a day, I really think I'm going to be off my mum's Christmas card list. Oh, sh... Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That looks terrible. If I do this on the day, then I'm going to be really disappointed in myself because I want this to be amazing. Oh, no. Oh! It's not quite how Mary done it. OK, let's give it a go. Oh, my God. To be honest, I don't actually think it's too bad. That's lucky, James, because you're going to be eating it all week. Oh, dear. For their festive feast, Mary has organised a magical venue fit for a celebration, Leeds Castle in Kent. And after a week of practice cooking and eating tiramisu trifle, James, Jack and Leah are ready to try and pull off a Christmas surprise. I can't believe we're here. Two weeks ago, their limit was beans on toast, but today they will attempt to cook a Christmas feast for 15 people, and the guests of honour will be their mums. Alison and Kaz. I think mum can't be Ali, they think they're in a dream. The mums are totally unaware of what's going on. They've just been told to arrive at 6 pm. Okay, you ready? Ready as right. I've ever been. Right. Let's refresh and get going. Got everything you need? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a bit of pressure. Just want it to be perfect. Inside, I'm bricking it. I am so nervous but really, really excited. I'm determined to get my tiramisu perfect. I just hope the two boys don't screw up again. 
Good luck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm thinking is don't forget the horseradish. Jack, don't forget the horseradish. Don't forget the horseradish. It's been hard to keep it a secret from my mum. Every time I see her, I just want to tell her everything that I've been doing. Thankfully, I could tell her today. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to weigh everything out. I think that's what marked me out last time. To succeed, Jack must produce a perfect patty. James has to cook up a faultless ham, and Leah is in charge of a top-notch tiramisu trifle. Obviously, Christmas, we just sort of get to enjoy the food. You just don't realise how much work is involved in it. You know, it's not a nice, relaxing day for my mum or me, clearly. Right. Mary said to keep working it as I'm stirring it. That went really lumpy last time. There might be a lot to do, but the cavalry are on their way in the form of Mary and her helpers. So, are you feeling Christmassy? I think it's the perfect day for a festive feast. How have they been getting on with the preparations? There were lots of mistakes in the practice, but let's hope they get it right. It's a little bit more frightening for them today because it's not their own kitchen. So uh, I think that will be hard for them. Yeah. And the thing is, we have to remember, Mary, they cook in your recipes. They're bound to be feeling the pressure. Oh, is it on? Yeah, it's not even plugged in. <laughs> it's Jack's nemesis, the food processor. There we go. I'm a bit anxious about getting it done in time. Because ours need to go in, in the fridge in that for quite a while, fridge, don't they? Yeah, exactly. So we need to get it done. I never thought I'd be doing anything like this. Jack has his ingredients right this time, but he's starting to fall behind, as is James. Oh, it's quite heavy. I've taken it slowly, read the recipe correctly. I better get cracking a bit, I? <laughs> Meanwhile, Leah is preparing the layers for her tiramisu trifle. I'm looking for small mountains. <laughs> we start off slow and then work our way up. While the cousins struggle in the kitchen, Mary's keen to make sure the rest of the feast is in order. Your task was to go and get some wonderful chocolates. So we decided on truffles, because you like a truffle, don't you? Oh, I do, and also it's a bit of booze in there. Well, exactly. So I made them into Christmas puddings. You made them? <laughs> I know. Look, they're in this box. Yes. Da, 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 da. Oh, they look special. But while we were at the chocolate shop, we thought, we could get something nice for Mary. Oh, good. What is well, it? Well, look at this beauty, Mary. It's a portrait of Patrick and me in chocolate. Who wouldn't want such a gift? My little friend, my oh. little fevers. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Actually, I do think it looks like you, Alex. It does. I mean, Patrick, I'm not I'm sure, sure about your beard. <laughs> I'm very you. touched that okay. you should think of that. Patrick, I asked you to go and find some drink for this festive mm. occasion. How did you get on? Well, Mary, we went Goodness one step further. Gracious. We've bejazzled you a gigantic bottle of fizz. Look, Mary Berry's festive feast. Yes. There it is. Yeah. We spared no expense on no. the glitter. I mean, this is double dip. And it's sparkling. And I can't wait to open it. Nice and cold, please. You'll need a heck of a fridge to put that in. Luckily, we've got a castle-sized kitchen. So we're all right. <laughs> But the novice cooks will need more than a big kitchen if they are to pull off the most important meal of the year. The pressure is raising, definitely. This is where we want it to be spot on. Mary makes these things look very, very easy. When you're actually doing it, it's not as easy as it looks, so... Right, I think chocolate is done. With things starting to heat up in the kitchen, Mary and her helpers have arrived at Leeds Castle to provide support. <gasps> Hello, Mary. Hello, <laughs> how are things? Not too bad. Hi. Everybody's Hello. busy. Oh. Hello. Hello. I'm going to see how Jack is right Okay. Here. Right. Oh, can I see what you're doing? Right, Jack, this is the real <laughs> thing. How's it going? It is stressful. Looks as though you're doing the right thing. It you had a like bit it. of a trouble when you were doing it in practice. Yeah, just a little bit. The yeah. horseradish. I forgot the horseradish. Well, that looks pretty good. You've got the watercress layer there. Yep. The and the bit, actual yeah. consistency looks good. The pate might be taking shape, but he's running so far behind, he won't have time to chill it. 
it's a good idea to have chilled it for five hours. But in Correct. fact, you're not going to be able to do that. So pop it in the freezer, yes. which will really firm it up. So well, I'm going to leave you and see how the others are getting on. Thanks, Mary. But get a move on, because it's got <laughs> to get chilled. It will do. While Jack is racing to get his pate set, James is trying to create a sticky glaze, something he failed to do at home. James, how's it going? Because it's all very last minute, it is a bit of pressure. You've managed to get a beautiful know. round. You're impressed with it? I am impressed. We'll have no mistakes. No mistakes allowed this time. With the guests due to arrive any minute, Mary has tasked Patrick with making sure the dining room is fit for a very special festive feast. Right. Meanwhile, Alex is on hand to help Leah with the layering up of her tiramisu trifle. Look, these look nice, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Tasty. Can you just... Oh, I'll just <laughs> cook to another one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're really nice, aren't they? They're good, yeah, yeah. Mm, very yeah. nice. I mean, what I haven't told you, I'm kind of his level. You know, beans oh, and toast. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I was there really grateful for your help until you told me you had no cookies. Well, skills. I mean, it's just, you know, it's me on a thin. So does this now no, go no, in no. here? No, no, no more brandy. But a little drop, is it? It's not on Mary's recipe. Right, it's not on Mary's <laughs> recipe. Don't do it. If it's not on the, the recipe, recipe, don't do it. Right, OK. So like, all of that can go on. OK, all of it? Oh, no, 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 oh, sorry. sorry. What? What? No, it's not. I've got to add to chocolate. <laughs> let me read. Let me... <laughs> Any mistakes now could put their night in jeopardy, as the guests have already arrived. Have you done much piping? <laughs> Just realised the time. Bit of a rush now, we're coming to the end. Definitely feel the pressure. We do have a time that we're going to <laughs> eat. So, let's go. I'm worried. We've got to move on. I don't actually know until it's turned over. Um, I'll go and pop it in the fridge. I guess we just have to wait and see. After two weeks of hard work, the big moment is finally here. Isn't this lovely? And after two long years of separation, it's time to surprise the unsuspecting guests of honour. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kaz and Alison. Come in, come in. Come in. Come through. This. Oh, Everyone is here. Oh, oh, wow. Look at all your family. I recognise you. <laughs> you cut that all secret up <laughs> and How did you manage that? We've got a superb feast set up for you. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe this. This is a dream come true, isn't it? <laughs> Rachel. Oh my God, and there's Ryan. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> well, your wonderful children thought it would be a perfect opportunity to get you all back together. And they have made everything that you are going to be eating as well this evening. Oh, no! <laughs> Honestly. You look, is that a good so, thing? It was going so well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get them through with the dishes that they've prepared oh, so carefully God. for you. Chefs, come on in, please. Yay! 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 Superb, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you done that here? Yeah. yeah. Tell us, wow. yeah. Oh, really? The whole lot? <laughs> now, this is the thing, though. They haven't got that much form in the kitchen before now. <laughs> and it's because they've had a very, very special teacher. And she is, of course, none other than Dame Mary Berry. <laughs> <laughs> Alison and Kaz, I think, I think you're going to be very, very proud. I am. Yeah. Uh, they have done 
wonders. <laughs> All for you. Oh, it's amazing. I can't believe it. Last year was extremely tough for all of us, and so we just wanted to say thank you. So, Mum, Auntie Kaz, this is a massive surprise um, that us three have put together just for you. Ever since I can remember, you just made Christmases so special for the whole family, and, you know, it's, it's our turn to do something for you two, and you deserve it, so... Yeah. <laughs> Don't they look gorgeous? Have you ever seen them scrubbed up? <laughs> oh, no, I know, they do. Look at James in his bow tie. <laughs> Before the feast can begin, there is just one thing Mary is keen to see. I think we should check the patty. It looks so professional. After you make well, it. Well, I did make it, so... <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. Nice. Let's just have a... Oh, you did it, Jack. Come on, yeah, let's just have the a one I done, Mum. Let's give this a go. OK, just tell Mary taught me. Nice and slow. <laughs> Sawing action, very gently. Mary did say whoever gets the end bit is lucky because they get most of the salmon. That's it. There we go. So if so I just bad. pop that there. Oh, I'm happy with that. Right. You can have a drink now. Did you do all of that? Yeah. <laughs> I told you she wouldn't believe me. Oh. <laughs> Are you surprised? Just so grateful and, oh, we've just got such a lovely family. Over where really we have. at LA. <laughs> Don't start me off. Oh, oh, God. Oh, no. oh. So lucky. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. I think that's sheer perfection and you should be very, very proud. Thank you. You may not believe that they did it, but I've got the proof here, <laughs> so you can see that it hasn't all been good. So can I <laughs> pass down to you? Mary has put together a memento of their experience, filled with family photos and pictures of their time together. Oh, I treasure this. It's just an... <laughs> uh, overwhelming, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Merry oh, Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> With the party off to a fantastic start, Mary and her helper's work is done, and it's time for the family to get stuck in. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. It's like a banquet. Are you okay, yeah. You've done some good job. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, mate, tip top. Yeah. Like, tip top. Yeah, boy. To see the smile on my auntie and my mum's face has just been, oh, it's been fantastic. They're having a laugh, having some good food that we made. It's, it's mental. <laughs> This is just literally what Christmas is about. I'll give you the recipe. <laughs> Don't think you ever thought you'd hear Jack say that. No. <laughs> I have enjoyed cooking. I think it's something I will do a lot more now. And that was all for you. Thank you, Jack. Mary and her helpers can start the journey home, safe in the knowledge it's a job well done leaving the cousins to their family time. Well, who would have believed it? Three novices making this festive meal for their mums. And on the day, they remembered everything, and it looked so professional. It really did. It's been fun being your helper, honestly. The pub. Come the on, pub. off we go. Right, pub! I take it we're all pretty peckish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the feast in full swing, James is serving his ham. <laughs> oh, now for the magic moment. Carving time. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> oh, well done. This is a moment I will cherish. I was apprehensive about it. It's, it's incredible. Awesome, mate. I'm well chuffed with it. I think Mary's impressed as well, so what more could I ask for? Mmm, that's lovely. Yeah? Mmm. We're really expecting it every year now. <laughs> it's delicious. Thank you. Are you shocked, Mum? Mmm. Chilly nice, isn't it, Al? Lovely. So fortunate to get a whole family in one room. I think my mum and Auntie Kaz are overwhelmed. Yeah. It literally is the best Christmas of all time. It's a pudding. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. Leah, yeah, it looks great. This reminds me of Christmas time. It's lovely. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. It's just been an incredible experience. I can taste the brandy. Can you? 
when they process everything that's happened today, oh, they still won't believe it, I don't think. Do you think that shot was the real? Oh, the real. Oh, she kept saying they were fake. You do know you're uh, married very to fake. <laughs> Everything's real, mate. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Everybody, I'd just like to propose a toast to Jack, James and Leah. I, I can't believe it. You, you've just done amazingly well. And um, we're so proud of you all. It's been the best evening ever, is not it? It uh, has. We'll never yeah. forget it. Never. So. Um. Cheers. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you right, Mum? <laughs> For us to be together, it, it just means the world. I can't believe the children have done this for us. Good can be merry, very well, that's a dream, isn't it? A dream come true. This yeah. is just topped any Christmas we could yeah. ever have. We treasure this forever. Yeah. Same time next year? Yeah. <laughs> merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas. Christmas. And thanks for all your help. My Both pleasure. of you. Happy here. Christmas. It's made it fun. I've got a game for us, OK? Have you? Yeah. Okay. Mary, are you ready? I, I am. I'm no, OK, sure. don't have a look, OK? Here we go. Right. There you go. Male or female? <laughs> female. <laughs> present or past? Oh, it's Present. Oh, present. I'll give you a clue. But it's a good clue. It's a good clue. <laughs> OK, this should give it away, but it depends how many of these we've had. Yes. All I want for Christmas is you. Well, you won't have me, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>